two cars. One goal, to win. Follow the new 3GT Racing Team in a six-part series as they make a name for themselves in their first year on the IMSA circuit. We're taking you behind the scenes, behind the wheel, and into the driver's lives outside the track. The all-access ride-along starts right now. This is In The Pit with 3GT Racing. I like to, you know, keep it lighthearted around here. Every, everybody just, you know, keep everybody on their toes, and uh, I like to have fun. That battle unfolding between the number 14 of Sage Care, and it is a good one. What you see on camera here, how I'm acting, is pretty much how I act with these guys. It's all, you know, having fun, joking around, but when the time to get serious is, is there, to get serious, you know, I know when that is, and you flip the switch and you go. Sage had a bit of a reputation for being a wild man, and I think what most people don't see about him and what we saw really in him is that when you put the helmet on him, he is an absolute scholar. He's brilliant in the car. For me, Sage was a guy that I had seen from afar. He, he came into our spectrum really through Scott Pruitt, who was his teammate at Ganassi. It's great working with Sage. He's great young talent, very bright future ahead of him. And so we, we continually try and figure out how to work off each other's strengths the best we can. The nice thing is that we're very similar in speed. So we're able to have a situation where we can really focus on what, what's best to get this car to win a circle. My roommate is uh, my teammate in the other car, uh, Jack Hawksworth. You suck, bro. <laughs> it's pretty funny because we've had kind of a story background and we started racing together in Star Mazda. And he was racing for Pelfrey, I was racing for Andretti. When I figured, you know, he was he was gonna move to, to Lansing, Michigan and I was thinking about doing it, I thought, hey, maybe I'll just approach him and we become roommates. And uh, we put all, you know, the past behind us and move forward and we've become like really, really good friends ever since we've, you know, started living together and uh, everything's a competition. Oh, oh my gosh. That was a horrible miss. That was not even my fault. That's a glitch in the game. We'll go play squash or something like that and we'll break the rackets, you know, when one of us loses and stuff. So, always, always, com always competition. Oh. It's that easy, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Good game, mate. Good game, mate. Wings. My grandfather built those for me when I was two years old or something. This used to be his old house, and they're still there. And that's my best friend Spencer's house. He's been my best friend since third grade, so he lives right there, on, you know, right up the road from me. So on top of the hill to the left is uh, Mario and uh, now Marco. Uh, Marco bought his dad's old house. Yeah, it's a small town. Uh, everyone is, everyone kind of knows everybody. Uh, this was my high school. And this is where I played football. Wrestling, racing, football, all at the same time. The wrestling room's right behind these doors right in there. So that's where I sp spent the, the days of hell right in there. Uh, every single time you stepped in the room, you just knew it was going to hurt. That's good, Joe. Drive through him. Good job, good job. Well, I always wanted to be a race car driver, but um, I, I came from a very humble background, and my parents could never afford to take me go-karting. We couldn't even afford to go and watch the races at Nazareth Speedway. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be the first to admit, I kind of lived through my son. I got him into go-karting when he was four years old. I mean, he was a natural. I was as a mechanic because we couldn't afford to hire other mechanics to tune the go-karts. So I learned a lot. I didn't know what I was doing. I was a school teacher. He's I probably think... a pretty decent driver today <laughs> because some of the crap I made him drive, <laughs> it was bad. But he learned to drive around it and uh, became a better driver uh, because of that, probably. You know, when you're in here wrestling, um, Dad usually cranks the room, you know, up to like 90 degrees, 100 degrees, it feels like. And when you're in the race car, it gets super, super hot. So I feel like when we can train, you know, in the harshest environments, we're going to be ready for the harsh environments when you're racing at Texas in the, in the, in the blistering sun. For me, the part about Sage that's interesting is he was an athlete. He was a wrestler, and I can identify with that. And that's a one-on-one -on -one competition, and that gets us back to that last lap. It's mano y mano, and 
you have to beat the other guy or you walk off with your head hung and he's not a guy that's willing to do that. Pit stand got pretty heated at Detroit. Uh, you know, the last few laps of me and Jack were together and Paul was hinting to, for me to let, you know, Jack by and, you know, but John's like, well, why would we let Jack by pretty much? And, you know, I'm like not letting Jack by <laughs> and Jack wants to get by, but you know, it's racing and, uh, you know, that's what we've been doing all season. When you get a guy with Sage's raw speed, but that little bit of reckless behavior, you can bring that back. It's really hard to get in the race car with a driver and push harder on the gas pedal. My goals for, for myself and for the team this year, we knocked off the uh, top 10 goal pretty quickly in the season, which was great. You know, the team wants more, and uh, you know, we really want to get a top three. I'm hoping in the near future, you know, we get that result that you know the team's been working hard for, I've been working hard for, and uh, you know, Lexus has been working hard for because everybody really deserves it at this point. In the next episode of In the Pit, meet Jack Hawksworth, a natural born racer, ready for a new challenge. Ready, ready. Green flag, green flag, go, go, go. It's quite exciting to be part of something, you know, from the ground up.